For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so in this video, the actual process of ketone body synthesis or ketogenesis. One thing we should keep in mind for sure is where this is all happening, and that's of course happening in the liver mitochondrial matrix. And before we actually get into the reactions and what's going on with everything, I just a heads up, I'm, I've numbered the carbons and the atoms uh, in some cases, one, two, three, four, in, the, in this case here with these two acetylcholase. And just as a heads up, that's not the actual numbering or, or um, nomenclature convention sort of situation. That's just a way for me to kind of help you visualize what's going on along with the color coding like this one's blue and this one's green, just to kind of see what's connecting to what, we can keep track of things, okay? But it's not the actual conventions. Okay, with that said, uh, let's get into it. So the first the first thing is that we're gonna take these acetyl-CoA's and we're going to combine them together in a condensation reaction. Basically what's gonna happen is that we're gonna connect carbon number two of this one to carbon number three of this one while losing this coenzyme A. So that coenzyme A is going to be lost, and we're going to connect those two carbons to get acetoacetyl-CoA. So we can see here that carbon number two bound to carbon number three there. Okay. So that first reaction there is a condensation of two acetyl-CoA molecules, right? And a condensation reaction is just a, a reaction that forms a carbon-carbon bond. Okay. And this specific step is catalyzed by an enzyme called thiolase which we've actually seen before. Where have we seen this enzyme before? We've seen it in the last step of beta oxidation, which is a process we mentioned in the previous video. The last step of beta oxidation was a cleavage reaction, right? Cleaving, um, uh, you know, in the process of, of breaking down the fatty acid, cleaving off an acetyl-CoA um, is catalyzed by a thiolase. So this is that same enzyme. And what's that we can see here is a double arrow is that the cleavage reaction is reversible. Okay. And it's the first step here in ketone body synthesis. So that gives us acetoacetyl-CoA. And the next step is going to take this acetoacetyl-CoA and turn it into this molecule here, HMG-CoA for short. Um, the actual full name is beta hydroxy beta methylglutyryl coa um, and the way this forms, you'll notice that this, this part here of the molecule is new. It's got carbons five and six. Where did those come from? They came from another acetyl-CoA molecule. Okay. And so what happens is that carbon number six is actually connecting to carbon number three, and we're losing the coenzyme A that's coming. So um, this carbon right here is connecting to carbon number three. And what ends up happening is that uh, these electrons are going to be pushed up and this oxygen ends up being protonated to have the OH group. Okay, So now we've got beta-hydroxymethylglutyryl-CoA. Um, this, this is the, the next molecule that we have. So basically what's happening here is we're forming another carbon-carbon bond. So it's another condensation reaction with another acetyl-CoA that's coming in. Okay, And so, like I said, we make HMG-CoA, which is a molecule um, we've actually seen before. And the the... The enzyme that makes it here is HMG-CoA synthase. Now, where have we seen HMG-CoA before? Well, we've seen it before in cholesterol synthesis. I have a video series on that. Okay. Cholesterol synthesis. But that's different, though. Here, this is happening in the liver mitochondria, whereas cholesterol synthesis occurs in the liver cytosol. So these are pretty much completely separate as far as compartments in the cell go. Next up, we're gonna take HMG-CoA and we are going to turn it into acetoacetate, which is our actual ketone body. This is an actual ketone body here. Okay. What happened? Well, we basically lost this part of the molecule here. Okay, And so we're gonna lose an acetyl-CoA here. We're going to lose an acetyl-CoA. Those one and two carbons. And we're left with acetoacetate. So that's, like I said, that's our, our ketone body. So here we're basically cleaving off that portion there. And so this is a cleavage to yield acetoacetate, our ketone body. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called HMG-CoA lyase. Okay. 
Now, this acetoacetate can give rise to acetone via a decarboxylation reaction. And decarboxylation just means losing a carbon dioxide. That specific carbon dioxide that would be lost would be right here. Carbon number five with those two oxygens that can leave as a carbon dioxide. And so that can occur spontaneously or it can be catalyzed by acetoacetate decarboxylase. Decarboxylase because it's removing a carboxyl group um, or carbon dioxide um, and it's acting on acetoacetate. So we could lose that carbon dioxide, that one carbon there and give rise to acetone. Okay. Now that normally happens very infrequently. Okay, I should write this in white, not brown so it's easier to see all right happens very infrequently okay and that's actually a good thing because acetone is toxic okay now what we'll see kind of later something that we'll touch on a little bit um, about the sort of toxicity of these ketone bodies um, but acetone being toxic uh, what happens in in diabetes um, a lot of it can be produced and is so much so that it's, uh, I mentioned that it could be exhaled before, right? It is possible to actually smell it um, in a patient's breath. So sometimes that's used for uh, diagnosing diabetes. Okay. Um, although no medical advice here, uh, if you're at all concerned about anything, hit up your doctor. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, so acetoacetate can be turned into acetone via decarboxylation. Okay. But it can also be turned into D beta hydroxybutyrate. Now, what happens there is that the uh, acetoacetate, we can see here that basically the carbonyl group right here gets converted into a hydroxyl group. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called D beta hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. So we see here that it's reversible. Okay. Um, dehydrogenases, they are associated with redox reactions. And we can see here that we're going from two bonds to an oxygen, to one bond to an oxygen, right? Two bonds there to oxygen at the double bond, just one here. We also gained a uh, hydrogen. So acetoacetate was oxidized or reduced? Let you guess there, it was reduced, right? It has less bonds to oxygen, more bonds to hydrogen, so it was reduced, which means something else was oxidized. And in this case, what was oxidized, it was specifically an NADH. NADH was oxidized to yield NAD plus okay, in this reduction reaction. Okay, so now we basically created D beta hydroxybutyrate a ketone body. Okay, okay, cool. So we've made the ketone bodies. Now what? Well, this all happened in the liver mitochondria's matrix, right? The liver mitochondrial matrix. And so what happens is that these ketone bodies they're going to travel in the blood to extrahepatic tissues, extrahepatic tissues to be used for energy. Okay. Now, something I want you to keep in mind is that in in healthy individuals, this is not happening to a great extent. This is happening very very little. Very few ketone bodies are synthesized under normal conditions, okay? It's normal for it to for ketone bodies to be synthesized, but not to a great extent. Anyway, that wraps up this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.